Good morning. I really think this is super important. Um, perhaps some of you know who Mr. Wim Hof from the Netherlands. The Iceman. He holds the world record for being able to be submerged in ice for almost two hours without his core body temperature changing. He's climbed Mount Everest in nothing but a pair of shorts and ran a marathon in the desert uh. in any water. Um, longest arctic underwater swim under the ice where his retinas froze because <laughs> it's so cold and he couldn't find the other side hole so he had to basically double back to uh, come to safety. Anyway, his breathing technique has been a humongous part of my life for since uh, 2018, so the past five years, and um, yeah, I mean, what better time, you know, I've got COVID, right, from testing yesterday, um, it was about a year and a half ago, I, I'm pretty sure I had COVID, and uh, I like tripled down, just kept Wim Hof breathing in. One of the sets where I really went into hardcore reps with the breaths, I could feel like there was a crazy thing going on in my body and my, my eyelids were like vibrating and, and it was like <coughs> there was such a, an immune boost and it could have been some psychosomatic which is just fine with me and should be fine with <coughs> a lot of people because Dr. Joe Dispenza, right? Uh, you are the placebo. I haven't read the book, but... I did read this one, though. Read this. This book is amazing. Basically, I know the uh, premise behind what he's speaking about there, and uh, him talking about it in the many podcasts I've checked out of his. So... I want to show you an accelerated Wim Hof technique. So the background on what we're going to be doing, just so you know you're doing it correctly, is we're going to want to do at least 30 breaths. I always do uh, between 33 and 35, the first set. And when you do these breaths, what you want to be doing is bringing in quite a bit of air, like, you know, 90 to 90 percent of your lung capacity. And then when you exhale, you're exhaling about 70 percent. So not like a, a ginormous exhale. And you keep that going for that, you know, well, let's just do 35 breaths and then on the 35th breath what you're going to do is expel every bit of air and hold that void of air posture for as po long as you possibly can. And once you feel you cannot hold the void of air, suck in as much air as you can, and then hold that for as long as you can. But that's not as important that it has to be like 
<clears throat> you're wanting to pass out on that breath where you have a lot of air in your lungs. And after you're done with that, start the process over. And what I do with my sets is I start going to not just 30 breaths, I want to do 40 or more. Same thing though, like 70% out, but like a good 90% in. And we'll have uh, Blake <laughs> on the right three coaching so we know we're doing <clears throat> the right thing and we're on the right amount of breaths. I, well, I mean, I've told you how to do most everything and here let's just complete it. After the third set, you can conceivably do be done, but I do not ever feel like doing one or two sets gets anywhere near the benefit that you're wanting to do and the huge benefit I don't know if I even talked about it is it is comparable to taking one's first bungee jump in terms of adrenaline and um, engaging of like bone marrow uh, immunity so <laughs> why not do something that you can do and <laughs> do for free rather now my accelerated way like I was trying to get at and of course, I'm groggy. I'm gonna do at least four sets. Sometimes I'll do five or six even. Sometimes I'll just go to town because I'm having fun. Uh, the point is really not to hyperventilate. You don't have to hyperventilate. You can be in better control doing this. But in my accelerated way of doing this I will go and when it's the third and fourth sets what can happen is you can really when you are done with the uh, complete expulsion holding nothing in your lungs which is the time when your body's like come on give me some freaking air and that's when it's the uh, adrenaline rush of comparable to your first bungee jump. Which is really fun. You should try that too, by the way. Um, so, when, <laughs> when you get that to that point and your breath is a must, finally, to <laughs> fill those lungs... On the third and fourth set, what I'm doing is I am doing a Joe Dispenza technique where there's a central access in one's body that flows from like your sacrum, your lower region, in your pelvis area, and it goes all the way to the crown of your head and you can shoot your uh, lower chakra energy <laughs> all the way up to your pineal gland. This is real and, and when you do this you can just I mean depending on how many breaths and, and how intense and sort of purple lipped and crazy feeling you've gotten from doing this breathing technique and when you also 
Flex your perineum. Your perineum is your chode, your love muscle. Both sexes, we all got one. It's the muscle you can give your lover a hug with. You can... It's the muscle you flex when you're doing kegels. Look that up if you feel like it. You're flexing that <coughs> as the first thing with the breath to follow up. And then you're flexing the back abdomen muscle. Every muscle on the way up to the crown of your head. Every muscle. Think of it as on your spine, this uh, central access tube. Following the breath from its lower extremity and then follow with muscles on the way up like your back abdomen muscles flexing those as you kind of pinch that fluid to bring it all the way to your brain so like in the back of your chest and then back of your neck follow that energy up put it in to your pineal gland and whoa I mean free drugs everybody <laughs> It can be freaking amazing. You can open that third eye. So on top of having a ginormous immunity boost, this is what can happen. So let's let's do some, and uh, we'll have <laughs> Blake on the right count for us. And yeah, I. I don't know how large your lungs are, but mine are apparently extremely long because I got them x-rayed because I thought I had pneumonia half a year ago and it was just some crazy bronchial cold thing. And apparently my lungs are <laughs> too long and large to be captured with one x-ray they had to do two x-rays and it was it was kind of a cool experience they're like no you really have to check this out <laughs> i'm like okay oh wow yeah it could be because of all my deep breathing being a singer my entire life but here let's let's go to the wim hof breathing okay i'm gonna take you through a set or two, or maybe I'll just go all the way with you guys. I don't know who wants to stick around or who actually wants to stick around and watch these. But like I said, I don't know if we're gonna be in sync with the breath, so my counting might get out of sync with yours. And that's okay, just, you know. The important thing is to get to over 30 breaths and like I said we're gonna not do less than 35 ever and the second through fourth fifth sets we're gonna go over 40 breaths Mr. Wim Hof much of what I said right away um, I was going off of a vice special from He's even proven. Eight years ago, so. Um, just to show you a picture, I came across um, the Wikipedia page for him. And uh, here I'm just going to read a few things. And, okay, Wim Hof, born April 20th, 1959, also known as the Iceman, is a judge, motivational speaker, and extreme athlete noted for his ability to withstand low temperatures. He previously held a Guinness World Record for swimming under ice and prolonged full body contact with ice, and he holds a record for a barefoot half marathon on ice and snow. He attributes these feats to the Wim Hof method, a combination of frequent cold exposure. So yeah, that's another thing that I've been doing since 2018 is cold showers. Uh, sometimes I'll lay in the snow as well. <laughs> Breathing techniques and meditation. Hoff's method has been subject to several scientific studies and with mixed results. Now here's some things that I found interesting that I didn't know before because I'm not like constantly immersed in Wim Hof's life and, and uh, whatever's going on with him, whatnot. So 
Um, there's apparently method-related deaths <laughs> to uh, the breathing technique. Uh, four practitioners drown in 2015 and 2016, and relatives suspected the breathing exercises were to blame. In 2021, a Singaporean man drowned in a condominium pool when attempting the method. It was like a ginormous $67 million lawsuit filed against Interfire and Wim Hof. <laughs> um, it's against teaching the method, but you know, one thing is, I would never suggest you doing this in a pool. Please don't, don't do this while you're driving. Only do the Wim Hof method if you're sitting down, and I suggest the most beneficial way to do it is laying down. And you can lay down with your knees up. But if you're doing it when you're laying down, you get the most benefit. Well, I feel I get the most benefit because I'm so relaxed. And therefore, I can hold the no breath in my lungs as long as humanly possible. Because I'm not, you know, you, you can try the, the Wim Hof breathing when you're doing other things, but it, it's not going to be as effective. I mean, you can do some things, like you can be walking around, making your coffee, whatever. But toward the end of the uh, breath sequence, like around, you know, between 35 and 40, try to be not, you know, not have been doing anything physical and, and being in a sitting or laying down position. Because like I said before, if you're laying down, sitting down and you're relaxed, then you can have the no breath <clears throat> held as long as you can and uh, engage as much of the adrenaline and uh, <sighs> supposed <laughs> immune boost. Now, I'm saying supposed because I thought for, for sure there was empirical scientific evidence of everything because he does have um, the feat of being injected with an endotoxin and having 12 other people that he's taught the method to be able to do a mind over matter thing doing that so it's like it's it's fairly impressive but here i'm seeing new information that uh some of these things i just stated that he's claiming <coughs> are not 100% proven by science, you know, they got them hooked up to machines and whatnot and studying that so I'm not sure if this Wikipedia thing is 100% accurate or if um, it's not been updated or if well whatever the breath work itself and, and the method I'm telling you <coughs> if you want to go out for a night of drinking I'm, I've been a drinker most of my life, except the last 110 days or so. And uh, But if you're going to go overboard and, and give yourself a hangover because you're having a great time, I mean, you got to live, right? You can divide that hangover feeling by what I feel is, you know, it's 75% of that hangover is going to be gone if you do the Wim Hof method and you do at least three, four sets. So, uh, do I feel the need to um, read any more of this? Okay. Whatever, the swimming under ice thing, he did have the Guinness World Record for. It's been beaten since he had it in the year. In the year 2000. In the year 2000. Yeah, so. Uh, whatever. 
I sound like I'm defending him, but it's like, I just think he's a really, he is a very charismatic guy, so I, I'm glad he's gotten all the success he's, he's uh, seen through his life. He's, he's been through some real shit, you know, his, his wife was mentally ill and killed herself, and he's got like, I think, six kids, and uh, he was left with, you know, six kids. I, I think most of them were grown at the time, but uh, I'm sure they miss <laughs> their mom. And uh, that's the reason why he started his relationship with this extreme cold is, is uh, he felt some sort of uh, solace and comfort in uh, challenging his body. Maybe he was trying to kill himself, honestly. Like, maybe he was so sad that he's like, fuck it, I'm gonna go in the fucking ice cold water here and <laughs> see if I just can't get out. And then all of a sudden he's challenging his body and all of a sudden he had some crazy epiphanies or became super in, in touch with some inner awesomeness. I don't know. Oh, here's a nice one. In 2016, Hoff reached Gilman's Point on Mount Kilimanjaro with journalist Scott Carney in 28 hours, an event later documented in the book that what Doesn't Kill Us? It's titled, What Doesn't Kill Us? <clears throat> but, you got nothing to lose, and, and I'm, as far as disclaimers, I don't profess to be a medical doctor. I just know what works for me. I, I think this breathing technique is fantastic. I'm gonna stand by my own experience that I think it kicked COVID out of me a year and a half ago, and I think it, really helped with this bout of COVID in the uh, beginning stages when I had it. It didn't kick it out completely like it did the first time and uh, what I did to kick out, you know, the, the bad symptoms of COVID. I think the most help I got. Let's go. And through the nose, I'm sorry, I gotta clear some of that phlegm out. <laughs> Three. Five. Six. Seventy percent. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, remember, 90% in, 70% out, not everything out, when you're doing the breaths. Twenty-seven. 28, 29, 30, 31, 30, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. Everything out. Old.
<sighs> Set two. Two. Three. <coughs> Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Remember, like ninety percent in, seventy percent out. Twenty. Not everything out. Okay. When you're doing the breath. Hold it. Whoa. Please don't do this when you're driving. You could cause an accident very easily. You could really be out of it. Like, not go, not know what the hell is going on, really. <laughs> Set three, right?
long as you can. Sorry. <laughs> Set four. I feel 